everyone, and welcome to another episode of I Hate It Here, the first one of 2023. Uh, I'm Richard Lewis. Uh, Sam's here. We're going to spend approximately 80 minutes uh, hating the world so you don't have to. But Sam, obviously we don't talk to each other anymore. Our relationship hanging by a thread. Uh, ability to do shows greatly limited. I talked to you 26 seconds ago, but... Yeah, but that was before we hit record <laughs> to do this show. So that surely that was... Yeah, true. That's the only time. That those are the only times we talk these days. It's just before we go live. How are you doing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have to redo that on the podcast to make it look like we've still got some innate form of chemistry when really creative differences have torn the friendship apart. Creative differences. Who are we? The two Ronnies, but <laughs> exactly, exactly, mate. We're gonna both. We're both gonna. Try, we're gonna not talk to each other. One of us will die, and then the other will come out and say, oh, "I wish I'd." Memories. Yeah. Yeah, be like that episode of Inside Number Nine, Cheese and Crackers. Wait, if it gets on the Graham Norton show, but fuck it, you'll be sacrificed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the, dream. <laughs> that's the dream for you, is it? That's how they the Graham, Graham Norton show. Yeah, you just sat there like with a vape pen. That's definitely not going to is it? <laughs> he was a glutton for punishment, Richard. I'll miss him, but he was his own worst enemy at times, he were. And he never put that bottle down. I'm all right. I'm all right. My DVD will be coming out next week. Yeah, my DVD it's called just Fuck my Rich laugh on a repeat track. <laughs> if you want yeah. 45 minutes of hee hee hee, that'll be 12. Yeah, the new comedy night. album, Laughing at Richard's Untimely Death, <laughs> <laughs> will be available in the foyer. Mm. So, what'd you do for Christmas? Not a lot, but pretty quiet Christmas. Had mm -hmm. a fat dinner. I, oh, but I'll tell you what I did do. I went what, to. What um, did you do? So I was working quite a lot in December. So I got back like 21st or something like that. So just for Christmas, I went to Costco because one of my mates has a card. But All right, yeah, yeah. Big. Well, I, the problem is it doesn't show the VAT, is it? So I'm walking around, but just live the dream. I got a trolley uh. full of shit. Get to the end. But guess how much I had spent on fucking just fat boy items, but just cans of Coke, fucking. I got 24 Kit Kats, 24 Galaxy Caramels, yeah. kilogram of shoes. About 400 of those mini packs. I was just picking around the shop. Guess how much I spent in Costco, but I tried to think. Well, go on, 400. 900 quid, but. No, 900. You, but. How have you spent 900? Really I don't even I know. 900 on I don't even know. Galaxy chocolate. Because, like... right, I bought there were like a few big ticket items. I bought a, a, like a two litre bottle of Grey Goose that cost me 90 quid, right? right. That, yeah, that's fair. So good that's value, that. Like, yeah, exactly. Why not? Yeah. Good deal. I bought uh, like 48 cans, like two slabs. That cost me, I don't know, 20 quid, many four. He's doing an Andy Ford at Christmas. Yeah, like. isn't it? But I, I don't even know what else I bought. I bought the Pendaren whiskey. I was probably another, like, 50 quid. Pendaren's nice. Good drop. Um, I just fucking just absolute useless nonsense. Like I spent 10 quid on a litre of maple syrup. I haven't touched it. But I haven't even opened the fucking what bottle. You, what would you even use it for? Who oh, no. knows? Well, the fucking 140 pancakes what was the plan, but I haven't had uh, either of them, but <laughs> I haven't even touched them. I've got a kilogram of cashew nuts, I haven't opened them. Were you by yourself? No, no, no. Well, it was me and that guy, so he was buying some shit as well. Uh, but right. He spent 160 quid, but I spent about fucking 880. And and were you, were you high? No. Nah. And this was across two days, but that's the thing. Because I I've done that loads, like I've gone to the shops when I'm high. Yeah, and I, you know the the brain is just ah, oh, well, that'd be nah, nice it's to just because they have your eyes up by getting <laughs> with like the bargain mindset, Nate. Because you look up all the prices are without VAT. It's like America style, yeah. so you yeah, have yeah. to look in. So you just look up, see the big number. Oh, great deal! Check that in thirty six eggs for three quid. Check them yeah, in, and then you get it. It's like ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it still works out cheaper, doesn't it? Yeah, if you're gonna use them, but like I got. To Fuck, an eight pack of giant Kleenex tissues, but because I had a bit of a runny nose, I was like, I need some tissues. Oh, that's what it was, was a yeah. Giant I'm pack having a bit of, of a wanking phase, is it? <laughs> well, but to be fair, these are the royalty <laughs> of wank napkins, if that's what we were buying them for, but because they're massive, but literally, I'll unfold one now, but it's a solid, like, 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters, but it's massive, like, you could make a blanket out of them. Oh, sound. There you go. Well, this you is just, no you just lay, quid, lay it on but... any surface. You don't even have to aim. 12 quid or a thousand tissues I'm never going to use. Like, I want one pack. I'm like not even a quarter through. I blew my nose. Ah, two well, days. we'll, we'll, we'll sort that out. We'll, we'll get you one of them variants that are flying around. Like... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, That'll pay for itself when you're fucking shaking like a shitting dog dying. Did get so... a good deal of water, though. But for, uh, I think it was, was it oh, yeah? 36 or 48 bottles of water for £2.80. Banging. 
I got fucking wrecked. Like, I ordered some proper water. You know me. Like, I only fucking, only the best for rich. Like, <laughs> you've seen me sipping on them Fiji's. Like, I don't fuck around. Like, I don't care. Like, bottled water. I, I try and get the ones where I know it's not like just tap water in a bottle. Like, because, like, loads, you know, like yeah. this on that Dasani bullshit. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I ordered my standard, like, cases at the start of the month. And they sent me these, like. <laughs> yeah, those are the brand from Costco, but Kirkland. That's yeah, the Costco fucking, brand. Uh, they're not for rich, like. <laughs> like this, this, this is an out. Mate, they're half the size of a BG. Like. you a fucking baby version as well. Tiny little baby bottles. Even my friends were over, they remarked, like, because normally, like, I put bottles of water out for when they're sleeping, like, so when they fuck off in the morning, because, like, the rule in my gaff is if you stay over, you do not disturb me in the morning. Like, I don't <laughs> care what you do. You make coffee, you make breakfast, you can watch a movie, you can stay there till I wake up. But if you wake me up, like, they'll be able to pay. So I put, like, bottles of water out for the guests and all that. And even they said, what the fuck are these? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're used to the best as well. Uh, and I'm going down curtain. the shit Rich. Yeah, mate, that's what he said. Oh, I lost all his money on crypto, has he? That's what he said. <laughs> said, you're thinking of Henry. Then they said, who's Henry? I said, never mind. <laughs> well, that's one nil to me. I won the But cryptos. that is one nil to me. Needless, needless. He watches this podcast, so he'll be upset by that line when he, when he gets around to saying it. But yeah, so, well, look, my Christmas, I'll tell you about my Christmas and... I didn't really do much. I had to, you know, go back see the fam for a day. You know, you fucking put up with it, don't you? So I did that. And then uh, I had a massive Boxing Day piss up. It was fucking, it was grotesque. It was, it was, it was, that's the only word for it. It was grotesque. Basically, like, I uh, started drinking at 11 a.m., cooked a massive dinner for all the boys. All the boys came over, had a massive dinner. It's people started dropping like flies about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And by dropping, I mean literally just asleep wherever they were, just out cold, <laughs> un unwakeable, unshakable. Just my house just looked like a fucking crack then, but I was still drinking. I, I opened a bottle of rum at 11 a.m. the next day, still awake, still drinking from that night. So I was fucking absolutely destroyed like I, it was so bad i hit a mate up for some fucking shrooms <laughs> but the, the hangover Long was so brutal <laughs> no 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 it was on like the 20 it might have been the 27 i can't remember right. i mess. I, I posted on the discord when i was wrecked i was what i was watching star trek on shrooms like <laughs> it was good good choice yeah, you know, it it was um it was the I, I watched season seven. I got a mate who's never seen TNG before. He's been watching three episodes a day, so did a few shrooms and watched the uh, watched like the last few episodes of Trek, and uh, was was talking about why Worf is a legend on Discord randomly. Shroomed out my mind, and then and then one of the boys had infected me with something. COVID. I mean, it didn't test. It didn't pop this time. So That's I did want, mind you, I only did one test, so whatever. But the, those tests just don't work anymore. Do they? It could be, any, who knows what mutant variation I had. And then I was ill right the way through to New Year's. I couldn't even go out. So New Year's, I was just sat outside looking at the fucking, being a proper, proper tramp, just looking at the fucking free fireworks from all the people that paid for them. Can't can't stop me, can they? So, <laughs> so I, I did was that. death the year before Christmas, but I had to go up north four hour mm. train but yeah. i got on the train because the train strikes were on it was a shitty transport for whale service which is like our government thing which i guess everyone gets paid well but i tell you fucking what but they transfer cattle in nicer things but no fucking uh no heating but no joke i took a bottle of water on me i had like a few dregs in it frozen but i was shaking like a shaking dog for four hours but i got there got to my hotel didn't i have a big like winter jacket i wear didn't even take anything off but went to the hotel checking in please shaking like, are you all right yeah i'm just fucking cold i am but get upstairs to my room straight under the blanket i sleep in all my clothes and my shoes but wake up the next day stink in a sweat jump in the shower go to work eat my no. life you know that actually is the worst thing to do. Well, but it's, it was the fucking the only thing to on. do. But it was the only thing to do. No, if you want to get warm quick, uh, you get you you take off the clothes and you get under the blanket, like. Yeah, but I weren't wet. No, but even cold. even with yeah, even with cold clothes, because like obviously, you know, like you if the if the clothes if you've been exposed to cold temperatures for a while, you see it on these like Ray Mears videos. They do that. They get into the fucking igloo, and when they have the fire on. They fucking take off the kit um, to get, wa get wet, warm but... quicker. Nah, that's they're not wet, are they? 
I don't know. Snow melts. You don't. Or... You don't you, yeah, it's too cold. So you, you know, you're not getting. You don't get wet, wet. So what you do is you take the clothes off and you sit there and they, they warm it up. You, you know, warm yourself up. Like yeah. gets into your body quicker apparently. Because you want to warm your core up. Unfortunately, there was no campfire available. No yeah. campfire in your hotel room. Fucking hell, where were you at? Travel lodge. A, a slither of a will <laughs> to live, but. I mean, that's probably. But there'll be someone in the comments immediately now. Uh, actually, Richard's wrong. <laughs> That would that would increase your chances of hypothermia or something. So that definitely wouldn't. I don't think. I convinced I, but I, I probably didn't write. But I was convinced I had hypothermia because I was fine went up, and then I was deathly ill for three days after that. But but also it, I ended up fucking myself up because I got there at like seven p.m. I didn't have any food before I left. I was so fucked up by the time I got and cold. I fell straight to sleep, so I didn't have any food all day. Then the next yeah. day I felt ill, so I didn't eat. I ended up not eating for like fifty hours straight. But so I was fucking cracked out. But then by the time, after about four days, I was all right, but I was still coughing and fucking dizzy, dying. You were dizzy, Christmas. blood. I was dizzy, blood. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Like I said, I got sick too. I just, so, you know, I, th- I think that'll just be happening until the end of time now. Yeah, You'll just be getting some, no, gnar- yeah, yeah that, exactly. Just getting a gnarly COVID variant every year, uh, at least one a year. So, whatever. Until the one that claims claims I you. I never take anything either as well, but like whenever I get it, unless I never take any like paracetamol, ibuprofen, I always just brer it out. I want to get the most of my antibodies while my immune system still works, but I don't think I can fucking do that anymore. I don't think I can survive, but I had a few lem ships. I was dying on my ass of ibuprofen, you know what I felt like, but that's about it. Well, I'm glad you made it, Sam, so we can record six episodes of this podcast in 2023. I was going to say, yeah, uh, in a year, I thought, I hope you mean. <laughs> yeah, no, tonight. And mind you, well, I got you there. I'm always tempted. Um, so, look, uh, let's do it then. Uh, with the original plan for this, I just haven't had time to script it, mate, because I've been mad busy. But I wanted to do I Hate It Year right. and do all the worst Yearly stories of 2022. Out. But that, yeah, exactly. But that's hard. Uh, that's hard. That takes work. Instead of just like looking in the fucking Discord channel where everyone's posting all the mad stories, you know, just look at the seagull. It's the same video of a seagull eating a rat that you've seen a million times. Seagulls eat rats, as if that's the worst of their crimes. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so you know, it's it, it, we're just gonna do a normal one today. But I will try and script that out. You know, between that and writing the it's article never that's never getting published, yeah, Year of the Scumbag. I am here, no, listen, yeah. I'll do it, mate. I'll, I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm a loser. Jokes I'll do you. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a loser, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of losers, we can do a segue there, if you like. Uh, I don't even know this guy is a loser. You tell me, is, yeah. he, a, is he a loser or a winner? Uh, headline from the Scottish Sun, uh, I'm still loving it. McDonald's ba, 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 ba. addict. <laughs> McDonald's addict has eaten a chicken meal at fast food chain every day for nearly twenty-five years. So stuff. It his name. It says Bin Man. <laughs> Danny Kelleher enjoys a McChicken sandwich with fries, nine nuggets, and a cork for his evening meal but only eats a packet of crisps for lunch. I don't think I believe him, but... For, look at that, 1,400 calories. That's for fucking mad deficit. All he has for food is that. Yeah, which, you know, I, I expected him. Like, if he's literally only eating that plus a packet of crisps, and that's yeah. what he has I mean, you're day. not getting any nutrients from it. There's no goodness no. in there, but as he far should as have calories scurvy, in, like, he should yeah. have, mate, he should have fucking scurvy. Like, he's fucking... He should be ball-legged. <laughs> He should be rickets out, you know, rickets to the max, like fucking, you know, gum receding, hair falling out <laughs> in clumps. Let me see what he said. What one of the well, coaches says, when it comes to McDonald's, I'm like a crack addict waiting for drugs. <laughs> yeah, he's a rock. yeah, he just <laughs> looking for a McDonald's, like, you know, yeah, perfect. Mate. That's great, great news. Do you think you have a problem, like? You've been doing this for 25 years, like, this isn't a... By the way, as well, like, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, this must be an advertisement for McDonald's, like, you know, they've got a new menu out, which, by the way, anyone who's got now TV knows what I'm talking about, because if I have to listen to that advert one more time, tell me what's your flavour, ooh, I'm, I'll fucking, I'll lose it, like, but anyway, then 
that that being the embedded quote in the middle of the art. Yeah, and no, McDonald's had nothing to do with it. I'm a fucking crack addict for them Mac EDs, really. <laughs> Have that as your new slogan, you know. Fucking ridiculous. It says here, his addiction began when he was five and refused to eat anything else. And doctors said it was better to eat something than nothing. Not right, wrong. now listen. He's done you that. Right, no. Doctor has a point. But if you ask that same, if that same doctor was here on this podcast and I said to him, did you mean eat McDonald's and nothing else for 25 years, doctor? He would have gone, <laughs> no, because such advice would have had my medical license taken off me. So what this says to me, mate, and like this is a controversial topic to wade into immediately, just fucking dog shit parents. Yeah, I go. mean, you kind of have to just do this like... Uh... You have to just be cruel to be kind to yeah he is going to scream and kick but eventually he is going to be angry enough to eat something that is a mcdonald's like after a good 12 yeah. hours now because like listen that's what i got when i was a kid i don't know if this is abuse i don't know where the line on abuse is anymore for my growing up because it was like i you know we had i, I caught the tail end i'm gonna sound ancient here but like one of the like the school i was at our headmaster de definitely had just been told he couldn't give anyone the cane anymore when I went to big school, <laughs> so so there was that. But we, I got I got leathered. It was just normal. I got the belt when I was growing up. You wouldn't get, belt a kid now. Like that'd be an outrage. But I, I I got the belt many times. Used to get starved. You know, right? Well, if you, you don't want it. You can't have it. <laughs> Sound? You just don't eat today. I mean, all of this would be called like you know abusive parental behaviour. Yeah, but I never the, had the, any digs. There were no digs when I was a kid. But uh, yeah, if I was refusing, yeah, your your general you're... like, well, fuck you. I fucking food yeah. on the table. If you don't want it, go on. Be. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. It was like you could see how like abuse was basically like being phased out. Yeah, <laughs> like Probably down the, the generation. Best, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, listen, it's good. It is good because, like, my dad used to tell me horror stories, like, you know, fucking beaten up, stripped naked, made to stand in a bath of cold water, you know, locked in a closet, like all sorts of cemented shit. I'm like, well, I never had the, I never had the closet. I never had to stand in a bath of cold water, uh, but I, I did get the belt. I did get beaten up way past the point of uh, appropriateness, and did get roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, like John Jones did come over and pull my head off. Yeah, man. Like, like when he fucking elbowed the deaf dude on the top of the head. That's what my fucking stepdad used to do to me. Like, I'll pop your fucking ears out, you cunt. <laughs> um, so I had that, and obviously I had, I had the starvation. And then it looks like by the time it got to your generation, people were like, yeah, you, you can't just kick the shit out of children anymore <laughs> for minor acts of defiance. So you just starve them instead. Then everyone went, yeah, that's much better, yeah. So, so good for you. He goes on to say, uh, Danny said his obsession means he doesn't go on holidays with his family because they like to go to Tunisia where there are no McDonald's. <laughs> so he, he can't even do without a McDonald's. Like He, he says he, he won't even eat at any other restaurant in the UK because other foods make him violently ill. And he said... He tried a McDonald's Big Mac and a quarter pounder, but they weren't for him either. So, so increasingly, and I'm I'm not a doctor. This just sounds like some sort of mental illness, really. Like, oh, yeah, it does, sure. <laughs> does sound like some mad fucking eating disorder, like because there's no what. So even other even other stuff off the McDonald's menus like poison for you, like a Big Mac. Like oh, get it away. Are like, you sure? Like, Disgusting that. Yeah. So he, he only has, he can only have a McChicken sandwich Just and nine chicken, chicken nuggets. And, uh, here you go. This will make you laugh right at the end. Um, and then we'll just move on, I guess. Um, doctors said my diet might be a cause of my sepsis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just could stop at this. You've, you've ate yourself to the point of sepsis. I've like... infected myself with McDonald's. <laughs> Right, doctor said my diet might be a cause of my sepsis two years ago. I was at death's door. When I told them my diet, they said, how are you still alive? <laughs> After, I tried plain rice and pasta for a few weeks, but it was a living hell. Why so I went back to McDonald's 
and it felt like why heaven. Why be so aggrown himself? Why go for a cold turkey? So you go for McDonald's and so it's flavourless nothing. Maybe that's what the doctors don't want to do. But you could have something that tastes nice, but you've got to go to dry rice. <laughs> like, have a pizza, maybe. Try a pie. Try a no. sandwich. No. Anything he, he... other than McDonald's. A pie would be better. At least it has some fucking nutrients in it. It's not made of cardboard. At least the fucking bacteria would eat the pie. No, just not gonna. He's just it, listen. He knows what he likes. So here's to another twenty five years. Um. Anyway, another story about McDonald's I saw. <clears throat> um. And this was just uh distressing. Um. Just shows really how the standards of the earth have, have sort of plummeted. Uh. This is a story. Woman who gave birth in McDonald's bathroom. We'll be calling baby Little Nugget. Um, this is a woman who opened up about her experience giving birth in a McDonald's bathroom. Um, she went into labour in a Fulton County McDonald's uh, and said she just had one of them rapid labours. Oh, yeah. What Which, like. y- yeah. She said, like, she was out in a McDonald's. Uh she had, she was getting a, some sort of contractions. <laughs> she thought, "Fuck it, I'm having a Mackey D's," you know, because sometimes you do get the phantom contractions. And she said, uh, "I um, she uh, she said I'd been told don't go to the hospital until you start feeling a, feeling the contractions coming closer and closer together." And hers were still like fifteen to twenty minutes apart. And she said, "I didn't want to be in the hospital pushing for hours and hours." <laughs> Oh, you reasonable good good mcdonald's a much better option i'd say uh and uh anyway she went she went to, to have a piss and her water was just broke immediately and she was in full-blown labor just sat down baby's here like deal yeah. with it so she gave birth uh in in the mcdonald's toilet she had to tell did, all like, of the, the staff. Did come? Did, it, did she do it on her own? Did she, uh, like, was a partner with her? What was it? There's the same little guy. All right, well, she, she does continue. She says, uh, she, uh, she said she, um, someone ran into the bathroom and said, are you all right? And I said, no, uh, she's coming, she's coming, meaning no. the baby. No, I'm not all right. No. <laughs> no, I'm in full-blown labor. And I said, I'm about to, we're, we're about to have a baby. So uh, he told the McDonald's that his fiance was on the toilet screaming and that he'd tried to calm her down before she gave birth. He was saying, just breathe. I got her on the floor. I took I, I took off my clothes. I guess, he means to, <laughs> I guess he means to put them on the floor. Some of right, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. not all of them. I like to put them on the floor and, you know. He just panicked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Don't, don't, do I have to be naked? What's going on? <laughs> Says, uh, I took off my clothes. The ladies at McDonald's came up and they were at her front Lots side. Some napkins. <laughs> yeah, holding her hands and saying the ice cream machine's not working. <laughs> I had her feet propped up on my knees and we told her to push three pushes. Uh, within less than 15 minutes, their daughter was born. Fucking hell. So and no medical we... assistance, just on your own at McDonald's, but yep. And so, uh, to which, so I mean, they have stipulated that this is just a nickname. The headlines lured right, you okay. in. They were gonna call, like she wanted to call her little nugget, uh, but they decided it would be a nickname, and the kid is now called uh nandy aria marami phillips a much better name than little nugget which sounds like a really shit rapper so there you go that's that that's all the mcdonald's related news i've got um i've got some more sad food news though I yeah well this happened right at christmas ruined the whole thing for me tears in my eyes because ali ahmed aslam who if you're from around this part of the world you, you know, um, everyone owes him a great debt. He is the man who invented the chicken tikka masala, and he passed away at the age of 77. Britain's national dish, chicken tikka masala. It was specifically created over here in Britain. And uh, do, you know why? do you know why? So what happened was, 
classic gammon cunt went into a restaurant, got some delicious tikka chicken, yeah. right? Out of a tan door, like mm, lovely. And someone said, Oh, this is a bit dry, this like needs a sauce. <laughs> so this is this is true. And so what he did was he just basically gave he just gave like some tomato soup sauce he had. He had like a cream of tomato lurking Rooms around. Can. <laughs> Probably like <laughs> It was the 70s, you know? And he just fucking slopped it round the fucking chicken. And the gammon went, yeah, much better. Like, Lovely that, mate. Lovely. And then, so over the years, he refined the sauce, you know, yogurt, cream, spices, all of that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, basically, you know, a mild curry that has all the flavour of ch chicken tikka, but with a sauce to accompany it. No, never been done before, just like the Balti being made right here in Birmingham. So much Indian cuisine invented in Britain. But he died age 77, hell of a run. Hell of a run. It's got to be said. Um, Although, I bet he didn't get any fucking royalties on a chicken tikka masala, did he, but? You weren't getting no kickback on a masala, right? Like. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 let me see if it says anything in the story. Um, can't, uh, what's it called? Can't put a patent on food, can you? Yeah. Know, maybe. Uh, oh, that, that, that's an interesting little tidbit. He was originally born in Pakistan. So the most famous, like, Indian cuisine was invented by, uh, by a Pakistani gentleman. I didn't know that. But anyway, um, yeah, says he, he started it in his restaurant. In uh, and um, it became famous for it, and the the recipe just proliferated around. So yeah, and oh here you go. In two thousand and nine, a Labour MP for Glasgow called for the city to be officially recognised as the home of the chicken tikka masala, uh, and he wanted it to be given an EU protected designation of origin status for the curry, and uh, he tabled a mo uh, early day motion in the House of Commons. But the bid was unsuccessful uh, because another a number of other establishments also made counterclaims to invent in the dish. So his origin, I guess, yeah, I guess he gets no kickbacks for it. His origins can't even be proven. But I believe the story. It's the story I was always told. Sam wouldn't have been possible without some Scottish gammon. Bless him. Not being able to cope with even slightly spicy food. Because we all know the Scots have just a fantastic diet. This one. What if I said instead of Merry Christmas, Merry Cancer? How would you feel about that? You wouldn't Offended. know what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know what I was talking about. Well, there was a surgery in Doncaster. And they went to send a, a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> See, Mate, I the word it is mental as well. Like. Yeah. Oh, it's really bad. Like, yeah, yeah really bad. Uh, this is a surgery in Doncaster. They went to send a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year message to all of their registered patients at the health centre. And instead, uh, they accidentally sent out a text that told everyone who received it um, they'd been diagnosed with aggressive lung cancer. Aggressive. <laughs> yeah, no, Christmas Eve aggressive. Aggressive lung cancer with metastasis. In Fitness. other words, you, yeah, yeah. You, in other words, death. You've been given a fucking healthy dose of not long. <laughs> oh, yeah. mate. Yep, so you can see the text when Sam brings it up. It says, uh, from the forwarded letters at CMP, uh, but has asked you to do a DS1500 for the above patient diagnosis aggressive lung cancer with metastasis. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like that's supposed to go to someone within the NHS. Right? Yeah, it or is. It is. Because obviously what happens is. is they probably just got an automated text thing and, you know, cancer, Christmas, you know what I mean? And you're just going through all the things and it sends it out to people who've got the texts and somehow all of the numbers for the Christmas have been mixed up with the, all of the numbers for the 
fucking people who do tests for aggressive, aggressive. lung cancer. I'll just read the BBC and then I'll read you the, the thing they sent out to try and make up for this absolute trial. Because I'll tell you what, like, even though a part of my brain would know this was a mistake, I would fucking spin out Isn't still. It? I would absolutely spin out. Do you know what I mean? Like, because obviously, like, I haven't had no tests recently. So how, yeah, how would you even I, know if I did have it? My doctor's a fucking genie, but he's diagnosed with <laughs> cancer. Why haven't even seen him? Exactly. I haven't even seen my doctor in two years. And I'm the blue. Yeah. He's probably right. Lung, aggressive lung cancer, blood. Yeah, mind you, like, probably. Like, nice guess, you, but I, anyone yeah, could have got you, If you got this yeah. text, you would have been like, oh, fair enough, but yeah, you have nailed it. It's about time. Yeah, about time. Uh, anyway, a GP surgery accidentally told patients they had aggressive lung cancer <laughs> instead of wishing them a Merry Christmas. Askern Medical Practice sent a text message to people registered with the surgery in Doncaster on the 23rd of December. <laughs> oh, it's so outrageous to do it right before Christmas. Like, you're like, all right, that's it now. We've done all the shopping, all the turkey, all that. We'll just enjoy Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. We'll get through it all. You're losing Bam, your aggressive lungs. cancer. <laughs> yeah, no lungs. Dead in days. The group which runs the surgery said nobody was available for comment. The centre has almost 8,000 patients. Um, <laughs> listen to it. Listen to some of the reactions. I shouldn't laugh because I would have been one of these people, but it's just oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Right? So one person who got the text, uh, Sarah Hargreaves, was waiting for medical test results. Like, oh, oh mate. <laughs> Oh, but oh, but she was literally waiting for test results on that day, like, and she said, uh, she gets the text. I felt sick to my teeth. (laughs) (laughs) You ever heard that? You were sick to my teeth, as in the six all the way up to your teeth, but like, yeah, but like, you know, I'm full to the teeth with (laughs) spoon. Oh, never like felt sick to my teeth <laughs> and broke down. Oh, I just that. had a mole removed oh, and man. was awaiting a result from a biopsy. No. And I'd been to hospital at, 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 because my smear test had come back abnormal. So, yes, I was very oh, worried. Timing. Oh, no. It says here as well um, Carl Chegwin. Right, no He's... relation to Keith. Yeah, no relation to Keith. Right, you'll you'll love his quote, mate. This will fucking break you. Carl Chegwin, another of the surgery's users, who along with his mother received the text, said he was left upset by the out of the blue message, which was enough to break someone. <laughs> Well, the first he thing... said him, but his mother got it. But truly, then yeah. you figure out, well, our chances of us both having a double aggressive lung cancer, like, I would imagine if they did. Oh, You'd man. feel a fool. Oh, Christmas. Yeah, anyway, he said uh, the text was enough to break someone. The first thing I thought was, is this some kind of sick joke? <laughs> <laughs> it completely took me by surprise. It's not often I go to the doctors than out of the blue. It's cancer. <laughs> I'm sat there scratching my head thinking, I do smoke. <laughs> do they know something I don't? They've just told people a few days before Christmas they've got terminal lung cancer. They can't do that. (laughs) They have, like. Meanwhile, a woman who asked not to be named said she was left feeling very worried about the text with family members recently having tests about ongoing chest issues. I rang the doctors, but on hold as usual. So I walked around as as I live around the corner and there were, I'd say, six people all there panicking as they got the same text. I mean, figure it out, guys. At that point, like, definitely there's six of you outside the surgery and someone else turns up, oh, you've got lung cancer as well. Like, you know, unless you live inside of a fucking chimney, like, <laughs> then you're probably, there's something probably gone wrong, hasn't it? Anyway, um, I'll read the text they sent out as a wave an apology. Please accept our sincere apologies for the previous text message. This has been sent in error. Our message to you should have read, 
we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a and Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. In case of emergency or aggressive lung cancer. Aggressive lung cancer we bring. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the, the story ends with another quote from Mr. Chegwin. What if that message was meant for someone and then they are told it's a Christmas message and then again told, oh, no, that was actually meant for you. He's got a point, like. The old prank, v- prank, double prank. Yeah, the old prank, reverse prank <laughs> into reality. If it's one of their admins that sent out a mass text, I wouldn't be trusting them to empty the bins. <laughs> he got them, all cheggers there, right at the end. So, yeah. Cancer for Christmas, Sam. Great. Um, yeah, great. <laughs> I, I guess we'll keep it medical, right? Um, <laughs> uh, God, I just realised in my notes it literally just says Merry Cancer again. It's just so stupid I wrote that down. But anyway, here you go. We'll keep it medical. This story just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is in Germany. So... In a hospital, okay, an elderly patient on, like, the old people's ward, right, uh, went up to someone else's oxygen machine and turned it off because the noise was keeping her awake. So a 72-year-old woman went up to, like, a 79-year-old other woman and switched off her oxygen machine while she was unconscious <laughs> so she could get a night skip. She died. This was in... Oh, yeah. Oh, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. She straight murked her. Like, she fucking murked her because she couldn't handle it. It's like, you know, put it this way. It's like, you know, there were many a time when I, you know, when back when we had to go on the road and we'd, like, you know, have a hotel room where we had, had like, the fucking, you know twin twin room and you'd be snoring and i thought about turning off your fucking oxygen be machine fair, AKA. Was apnea, but I, could, I could have turned off my own fucking oxygen machine yeah exactly I, I, I was there with the pillow like oh, oh i love you sam you're making me do this i've been awake for days like when we filmed that trash talk documentary we did oh i was peak yeah. fucking well, what's it called? Joe Wool's end as well, but the amount of pressure on my neck was pretty real. I don't do it anymore, no. I de de apneaed, but after I lost some weight, I can actually <laughs> breathe again. It's mental how much better I sleep, but I, I oh, must be like, sleeping yeah. like an hour of fucking night back when I was on my fatness, but now I can actually get six hours and I feel fresh. Mm. Yeah, but that was that was a tough one for me because obviously, like, I mean, look, I'm a I'm I'm a big lad myself. And so but I've got my own problems when I'm fighting my own battles, Sam, when I'm trying to have a night skip. And then obviously, like, between you and you remember, we were right next to the fucking cathedral. You're having bells on the hour every hour. Nah, mate, I can't. Like, it's given me a fear of bells. Like, like I, I can't stand bells. I, I think they're never going to stop ringing now. Like, it just spins me out spins me the fuck out but anyway like so i i i i did think about it like i'm not gonna lie i was there like people please just sam you're making me do this we've all had worry about i mind you i've had um, henry says the same thing about me like don't he so have a snore, but... <laughs> yeah i do have a snore like my I'm trick i do it to a, another mate as well who always snored if you just like a nudge you to the point where you're slightly awake that usually buys you about 20 seconds before you start snoring again so basically you have to like, speed run sleep but i have to nudge you and then try and fall asleep in 30 seconds if you don't do it but nudge you again go again start another run reset go again good method like yeah good method what you don't do is you don't turn off my oxygen machine <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that i'm turning your bloody slap your machine off it's pissing me yeah. off yeah, exactly. You've got one of them fucking things on your <laughs> oh, I sleep fucking brilliant with this on, but yeah, wicked Sam. Cheers, mate. <laughs> fucking pneumatic drill strapped to the head. Yeah, I just pipe in music and just go to bed. Like, <laughs> anyway, so I said it. Uh, the elderly woman lay in a hospital bed in the southwestern German city of Mannheim. A machine supplying her with oxygen her life depended upon. But for a fellow patient, the noise from the device was apparently too much to bear. 
The 72-year-old woman is strongly suspected of having switched off the main switch of the machine, police and prosecutors say, after feeling disturbed by the noise coming from the oxygen device. The first incident where the unnamed woman allegedly switched off the oxygen supply occurred at some point before 8pm on Tuesday, police said. Hospital staff intervened, telling her the oxygen supply was vital to her 79-year-old roommate. Now, listen, at that that point... Yeah, like, how are you warning someone about that? Like, yeah. uh, like you have to kill you have, someone, you've got to go. <laughs> yeah, you just move her at this point. Like, that. but anyway, they didn't. And then an hour later, the suspect turned off the machine again. This time, the consequences were immediate. The victim had to be resuscitated, police and prosecutors in Mannheim said, while an ar- arrest warrant was issued against the suspect who faces charges of attempted manslaughter. Anyway, it turns out in a follow-up story, uh, she caught. Well, I don't know how reliable it is. It's someone called the Teller Report. I don't know if it's like. I mean, you know, but it does say it. Yeah, Teller. (laughs) She needed telling, like (laughs) twice, evidently. She switched Um, me off. (laughs) Teller. (laughs) Teller. Um. So it says here that uh, she died, uh, according to the Teller Report. Um, and that now she is being not for attempted manslaughter, but the charge will be manslaughter now. So I ask fucking that's wild as fuck. It's like you don't think about it. Like I, I I've told the story before. Like I was I was on a ward when I got my fingers chopped off, and there was a massive fat lad across in the bed from me who had a horrific industrial accident where he'd lost all of his fingers on both hands, oh, and they were like he got he was pushing in. Uh, and the thing snapped yeah. like one of them like band saws or whatever yeah. and he was like pushing and it snapped and, going, and just gone through both his hands so he just had thumbs <laughs> good job <Two> thumbs up <laughs> so. you know so, <laughs> so anyway they were rebuilding his hands and um, <laughs> we can rebuild him <laughs> No, they did, mate, they did it. I've told the story before. It's in one of the YouTube videos, but just to repeat it for newcomers and people who love Richie 2 stories, uh, they took, like, because they had to, you know, he's lost his bones in his hand as well, because they, they just took him off like that. So they had to rebuild his palm initially, like, and try and get some surface area. So they took, like, flaps of skin out of his ass. Yeah. And gave him ass hands, right? Yeah. Ed with ass hands. And then they took three toes off each of his feet and sewed them on. And then somehow and the board done sword. micro Yeah, done micro surgery to get ligaments Fucking piped up. in. So through the ass. Yeah. And so he could like move his toes. As what? fingers. Oh, right. Yeah. I thought he meant control his toes with his hands. And well, I was like, as in the toes were still on his feet. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. He not. I thought he meant like, no oh, ghost, like his toes were still connected. So whenever he moved his toe fingers, his toes were <laughs> And the thing was, like, he'd had, he'd, he'd had like just the last phase of the toe surgery when I was there. He was recovering because it was like the, you know, it was a micro surgery. It was. It was in uh, Morriston Hospital in Swansea. They were like legends for it, apparently. And um, anyway, I couldn't get a good night's kip because he kept farting, and he was a big lad. It was like he was starting a fucking chainsaw, like <sighs> just every time, just, like just full guts, just being dropped, like with just no, you know, he was asleep some of the time, but awake, I'm sure he was just awake. They just didn't care, like he'd just given up, you know. He just Lost he'd had fingers a... and shit myself. Yeah, 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 he really was doing it, like. And so, you know, I, mate, you, you are tempted to say something, like, because I was struggling to get sleep. I was in intense pain. Uh, I had my arm pinned up like that um, on a thing to s- slow down the blood flow because I had a skin graft and, it, and, and the wound sort of isn't closed. So you're oozing blood right. all the time. And so I was getting woke up by blood dripping on my face every time I was getting to sleep. He's fucking letting rip like a fucking <laughs> pig in a sty. I was like, oh, this is, you know, uh, you know, I definitely want, I wanted to shut them off at one point, like, you know, when you're at your lowest ebb. But 
obviously you can't go I shooting told people. You off. When I you had, can't I, turn them off. I've probably told this story fucking ten times as well, but well. fucking Sammy Two Tails. Um, when I had my appendix exploded, but I was in a room oh. and this guy had just lost his mind. But and for about four hours straight, he was just screaming, "My arms! They cut in my arms off! They're taking up literally like but like a fucking." Why were you cutting his arms movie. off? Though, no, so? but he was just in the dark screaming, "They're cutting off my arms!" Then the next day, they brought the woman. I could hear her screaming as they were bringing down the ward, but they just parked her up, just fully, ah, just deep breath. 14 hours of that but and i said what's, what's going on like she's like oh the problem is we, she just does this all the time so we blow between the wards so everyone has to deal with it for a night and then everyone can get some sleep i was like oh fuck my life and i was door up morphine as well but so i was gangster tripping between the guys <laughs> screaming they're ripping off my arms urging screaming but it was like i was in the exorcist but seeing shit in the dark having conversations i thought were but they weren't and they and you didn't turn him off no I just can't right, sit well. laid in bed for three days, but so you know, there's a lesson we can all learn from that. It it is wrong to turn off people's essential machinery. So, elderly news. I, <laughs> this is this is such a stupid story. Like, uh, here you go. I don't know how this happened, Sam. I don't know. I don't know what's gone on. The news post doesn't make it clear. But uh, this was the story. Man with World War I explosive lodged in his rectum spark, sparks bomb scare and hospital evacuation. Right? So when I saw the headline, okay, my assumption was somehow, I, this is how, I, maybe I'm men, like I've got mental problems or I'm just stupid, I don't know. But my assumption was he was a veteran who somehow had got a device in his ass. What do you think he was? A spy, but like a, a Trojan but, horse. Yeah, was or, him yeah, in to blow yeah like, up. you know, like, yeah. Because, you know, he, he had the choice. Do you want the cyanide pill or the bomb up the ass? And he was the only guy who said, oh, I'll take the bomb give up the ass, please, right? Give him fireworks, boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so I thought it was something like that. I thought he had a bomb stuck in his ass. Do you want to know what I know think what it was? Know, yeah, Definitely some mad cunt who's just shoved the bomb up his ass for pleasure, but... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you've, you've nailed it, Sam. You have nailed it. The funny thing was, right, when I was scripting that, this show out, I, I was going to open this segment, I was just going to go, what's the maddest thing you've ever stuck up your ass, Sam? But it's like, it's just so... There's nothing, is there? No, you've never stuck anything? What the... <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but... <laughs> yeah, not a bomb, is it, though? You know? Not a bomb. So the, the, when I when I saw that, that was my assumption, right? But anyway, because it's the New York Post, the good old New York Post, it, they, they've written it brilliantly, as they always do. The case left doctors shell shocked. <laughs> Jimmy Carr laughed for that one, like ah, uh, fuck Jimmy Carr, he's terrible, isn't he? Um, <laughs> A French hospital was partially evacuated on Saturday after a senior citizen arrived with a World War I artillery shell lodged in his rectum. The 88-year-old patient. Like, how have you not had all your kicks by 88? That's what I'm saying. Like, who gets to 88 and thinks, you know what? One last roll of the dice. <laughs> <laughs> One last ride. <laughs> Bring out the bomb. One last squat. <laughs> One man, one bomb. <laughs> right? The 88 year old patient visited Hospital St. Mus in Toulon to have the antique explosive removed, but instead sparked a bomb scare. Uh, an emergency occurred from 9 pm to 11 30 pm on Saturday evening that required the intervention of bomb disposal personnel, the evacuation of adult and paediatric emergencies, as well as the diversion of incoming emergencies, said a hospital spokesperson. By the way, as well, do do want to say, like, it is you built, know, it is built to be a butt plug as well. But look at this shape, but why is it the perfect shape for this guy's ring? No wonder he was so what? Tempted. So you reckon he just saw that lying around and yeah, thought it'd be rude not to? Yeah, it's the exactly. perfect shape, shape like, it. yeah, built for it. <laughs> I was made to do it, but 
don't look how brown it is. <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not because of his ass, yeah. no. Is that's some of it is, but like... I can see some pop streak on it, but no, you can't. Yeah, see pop you streak. can, but of course you that's... can. He's fucking that's... been two foot deep in his ass. You tell me it's not covered in shit. Of course it is, you head. <laughs> Not pop stream. It is, but it's oil. The, or no, the oil. He's not a fucking transformer, but <laughs> he ain't got oil in him. He's got shit in him, but that's what's over that bar. Yeah, he, no, I don't doubt he's got. He has got the shit big in him, spot. But. There's probably a rust spot, but the streaks pop streak, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> is but <laughs> look at the size of it. I know what. How? Why is an eighty-eight-year-old man done this? Like, it's still gonna... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's the worst part as well, though, right? Like, do you know how you always say, like, oh, you know, like, people are, like, you know, all them embarrassing stories. Like, you know, we've done a few on this show, you know? People stick a lemon up their ass and lose track of it, or a woman has a dildo <laughs> and track. You know, it just plopped in there and oh, it's, it's heading towards gone. the tubes, you know? Yeah, gone. Uh, <laughs> you know, towards right? the tubes? Yeah, just, just, just all up in there, isn't it? That's embarrassing in and of itself, right? But at least it's just between you, your god, and the medical staff. You know, like like it, it, no one else knows, right? It's on your permanent record. Every doctor you'll ever see for the rest of your life will always see. Oh, it says you had day surgery in uh, twenty eighteen. For oh oh oh, I'm removed oh, from the ring piece, sir. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so how is your ring integrity these days? Good. Manage to maintain. Oh, hold the shit in perfect. Excellent. Yeah, you know. So it's always there, right? Now imagine you have stuck a giant bomb up your ass. What is it? Right? It looks like a mortar around or something, but. Yeah, yeah. It is an artillery shell. Yeah, it's an artillery yeah, there shell. Go, there you go, mate. Fucking look at you. I can recognize a shit coming from He's licking your lips. Oh, it's an artillery <laughs> shell. Like, oh, aerodynamic, they are, because they have to travel through the air. Right? <laughs> but anyway, so he... Disgusted by it, shit. <laughs> so he has thought, I'll just real discreetly stick this bomb up my ass, get my jollies, and then that's that. But, what, but he's got... He reckon he was thinking, fuck it, like, I've had enough, I'm old enough. Let's yeah, well, I got admit, I haven't like... even... I, don't, I haven't even got to the part where we explore if this is some sort like of demented suicide, suicide yeah. attempt. Like, oh, I've got material, don't worry. Like, but anyway, so he's gone to the hospital, like, thinking, well, fuck it, it's in there, I can't get it out. Like, which, by the way... It ain't yet to have that level of grip left on your ass is insane. Like I reckon he was what? more worried about shit it out, but you don't want to shit out an explosive what if you go up with it, but yeah. it drops out bang. <laughs> so uh so anyway, he's thinking he's just gonna get the same luxury that lemon ass gets, you know, with fucking just a doctor, that's that. But he's caused a fucking international bomb scare incident. Mate, you could like, take down an airplane with the uh, thing in your yeah. ring piece, but... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone's come. He's got the bomb. He's, mate, he's there in fucking stirrups with his cheeks akimbo we while a fucking bomb disposal man <laughs> like, in a full get-up. Like, the fucking Hurt Locker suit is staring into his arsehole. Do I cut the red wire? <laughs> Put him on the beach, but get him to spread them, kick him in the belly, but you could shoot down aircraft with him, but fire. Put him... So anyway, and also, yeah, like, is this the maddest suicide attempt ever recorded? Like, it I, did cross my mind. take a bomb like that? Yeah, but that's what I mean. Maybe, is there any possibility an 88-year-old eight, eight, eight doesn't know? Why would he have like, one, but... Did he bring it back from war, like, because I guess he's old and... Well, wait, no, it says First World War, so he's not even old enough to be in that, but... But it, that? it just 19, said, it just said, 13, it said it was a collector's item, so... Yeah, so I guess he just bought an antique and shoved it up his ring. It's by a dildo, <laughs> so he, you mad cunt. <laughs> I know, so he just thought, like, well, I like the shape of that. <laughs> I'll buy that, like, I'll buy that for a dollar, he said. They just, like, stuck it up his arsehole. A bit mad, didn't it? I don't know, mate. I don't know. Like, for me, I, I like the idea that what he did was he fucking, he said, I've had enough. I'm 88. I'm not getting any younger, but I'm scared of the hanging. <laughs> don't want to go out like that. I can't get a gun, so I can't just, you know, turn out the lights. 
So um, <laughs> what? I, but what I have got is this bomb, this suspiciously dick-shaped bomb. <laughs> so if I stick it up my ass, uh, and I imagine he's got his whole life as well, with just no it, ass play ever in his life, like never well, explored. Zero to hundred, like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. And he's thinking, I've never done it. And I don't want to live with the shame. If I like it, not a problem. It's a bomb. So what I do is I put it in there. And then I took my knees up to my chest. And I jump on the floor. I do a butt bounce on the floor. Blow well, myself to smithereens. Yeah, exactly. Just blow. Just in bits. like. And then he's done that a few times. <laughs> he's broke his hip trying to blow himself up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's done that a few times. It hasn't gone off because it's deactivated. And the impact of him trying to have the best death of all time has stuck it right up in there now. And then he's had to go to hospital and have a, have, a, have his ass deactivated. <laughs> I want to know, did he tell him what was up there? But, or did he just say, oh, I've got something stuck in my ass, I don't want to talk. But like, yeah, no problem. They respect the dildo, they pulled out a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it does say here, stunned doctors uh, subsequently began the process. Uh, which was measured almost eight inches long and over two inches wide. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, all right, yeah, you, that bomb's packing, fair enough. Um, it's believed the pervy patient inserted the item up his anus for sexual pleasure. It, nah, it, his, never is the that. <laughs> Is the quote from a doctor, apparently, as if a doctor said this, like, an apple, a mango, or even a can of shaving foam, <laughs> right? <clears throat> we are used to finding unusual objects inserted where they shouldn't be. What's going on, like, in this hospital? <laughs> like, in the, you've got a fucking arse department. Like, ah, oh, you have another can of shaving foam. You know, like, ah, oh, don't worry, he's done 50 uh, arsedectomies this, this year. Uh, an apple, a mango, or even a can of shaving foam. We are used to finding unusual objects inserted where they shouldn't be, one doctor declared. But a shell? Never! <laughs> Medics were forced to perform surgery on the elderly man, cutting into his abdomen what? in order to remove the relic. <sighs> Mate. I'm telling you, he butt bounced it up there 100%. How else is how else? Is, how else? I mean, how far? How how, I got wanna, it that far? I got to see, I want to see a video of that surgery, but I got to know. <laughs> how does video? that work? But yeah, are they like I squeezing it out, but like toothpaste, videos. but like squeezing the last out of toothpaste, squeezing a shell out his hoop? How does that work, but? I don't fucking Where know. Where does it go? Would... It's in the intestines, I guess, right? Where does it leave? Listen, I'm adventurous, Sam, but I've never, I've never bombed my butt. Mate, that's unreal. Like, I'd I've never bu bombed that. myself. I'd want to see that surgery video of them fucking. Like, that's all I imagine. Like a toothpaste, but when you squeeze your fingers down, it just do that to his intestine with a giant bomb in it. But... Oh, it's bonkers, man! Absolute mad story. Like, uh, and anyway, the good news: he's in good health and will make a full recovery. Oh, fucking hell. Despite Despite his story. best wishes. <laughs> his story for the wanted. grandkids, that, innit? Granddad, tell the story again. When you stuck a bomb up your ass so far, it went into your intestinal tract and caused a bomb scare. <laughs> oh, you, you, go you know I don't like talking about that. You know I don't like to... <laughs> You know I don't like to talk about it. I'm amazed he hasn't gone to prison, like. You know, well, he's took a bomb into an hospital like, inadvertently, but he's still yeah, done it, hasn't he? Sure what if someone's happened. died because they couldn't get a surgery? Because they had, they're like, you know, imagine you're in the operating theatre, la la la, slicing up a patient. Like, everyone must evacuate the building. Like, well, well, guess we're stitching him up. Like, sorry, but <laughs> didn't didn't get all the tumours. We'll Bad luck. Like, time. yeah, we'll, we'll get him. We'll get him next time, champ. <laughs> You know, there like, won't be a next time. So. Yeah, there won't be a next time. Fortunately, they're super aggressive tubers. So sorry. Did you get your text? Merry Christmas, aggressive. <laughs> yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Oh, for fuck's sake! Like, right, what else we got? Um, I'm trying to make it thematic. 
Um, let's do. Let's just get this one out the way because I want your opinion on this. You know I fucking hate Britain. <laughs> like people always going, you're always bashing on America. Like bash on Britain too. Like it's fucking shit all. Like you know, it's just America's got problems. Americans can fuck up a wet dream. We all know that. Britain's got problems. The things we legislate for, the things we have laws for, are ridiculous in this country and getting more ridiculous by the minute. Uh, all of those memes. Have you got a license for that? It's all true. You know. Um, but anyway, this is the one that blew my mind. So. The UK government are um, in, have consulted with like law enforcement, um, including the Intellectual Property Office, which is obviously they specialise in intellectual property violations and copyright violations. And it's been decreed that if you share a password in Britain for a streaming service or any other, you know, rented service like that. Uh, it's it's against the law, <laughs> against the fucking law. I says, yeah. Now it's crazy because Netflix, as as I mean, as you can see in this story, like in 2017 they did a tweet and it was like, "Love is sharing a password," right? Is what they said. Like I thought, you know, Netflix knew for all of these services, not people share a password, like. You know, like you give it out, you say, oh, you go and use this. Like, you know, I've done it with, uh, like, I, you know, for example, certain sporting apps, right? I might not want to watch every event. I might not want to pay a monthly fee. But, you know, if there's an event on I want and one of the boys aren't watching it, I'm like, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll log into your app and have a watch of that pay-per-view or whatever, like, you know, or that event. You know, just one of them things, isn't it? So it's been done. But apparently if I was to do that now, I'd be a hardened criminal. Uh, uh, which, I, I just I, I, I couldn't believe this. I don't believe it. I couldn't believe it, man. Couldn't believe it. I'll just read it there. It says, um, right, uh, the Intellectual Property Office said on Tuesday the practice of sharing passwords broke copyright law. It is common in the UK for people who do not live together to share streaming service passwords, despite this being against terms of service agreements. Netflix has never indicated it would take any legal action in such cases. I guess they won't, then. They're only a big fucking corporation who starved for money. Um, the IPO has removed the reference to password sharing in its guidance on the government website subsequently, but a spokesperson confirmed the legal position on password sharing hadn't changed, and nor has their guidance it said password sharing was both a criminal and civil matter there are a range of provisions in criminal and civil law which may be applicable in the case of password sharing where the intent is to allow a user to access copyrighted protected works without payment these provisions may include breach of contractual terms fraud or secondary copyright infringement depending on the circumstances where these provisions are provided in civil law, it would be up to the service provider to take action through the courts if required. So, you like, all it's going to take is Netflix, because you know they keep putting their money up. I don't know if you've seen this. I don't even know what we're up to. But now, they have, right? really recently they talked about it, that they want to stop password sharing. I think it's recently in the news that they brought it up yeah. as a topic. You know, they've been putting the money up, putting the money up. <clears throat> The other brain, the other fucking brain trust idea they've come up with, is in complete, you know, violation of their original principles. They want to put streaming ads on, yeah. you know. So again, if you watch something on like Now TV, you get like every fucking twenty minutes and an hour long show, just three ads or whatever. It's completely unskippable. You just got to deal with it. Um, you know, they're going to move to that model, which one of the big reasons people wanted to move to this on-demand model was because I'm paying a subscription to get the content, I get to watch it not episodically, not released every week. I get to watch it in one chunk if I want, right? Which then people have moved away from that now, you'll notice. And I don't want any adverts, don't want any commercials on my content. But now you're getting, you were going back to just, it's just TV. <laughs> it's just fucking TV. Yeah. What's, so what's the point? But the idea like of, of, of 
prosecuting someone, but like I, I kick them off. Like, I'm not. I'm putting it this way. I'm not. I'm not advocating for it. Uh, I understand why. If I had a business, um, you know, and fucking, I, I'm cheesing the system. Like everyone in the world, because I don't know if you remember, but like, think about Winra, <laughs> right? No one's ever bought Winra in the history. Uh, fuck it, just the world and you would just go you would just uh, there was just one person you just got there was like one cracked version of winra that just everyone in the world used and i don't know why they didn't have the systems to check it but you know that was always there like john smith you know with that password just coming up every time you used it you know and it's like so i get it that sucks if you've made something people actually do use but equally just kick them off the service like why would it need to go any further than that you violate the TOS, you don't get used to service anymore. All right, okay, fair enough. You caught me, whoopsie doodle. Prosecuting people for it. It's such a fucking British thing. It's gross. <laughs> but yeah, they've. Um, I think they're doing this thing now where you uh, you pay. You pay and you can put four people on or something. Yeah, that's the way you always do it. But I think now they've changed the wording to de- like device and they say like device still must belong to you. That's probably the word they use, I'd imagine. Because, mm. yeah, I remember back in the day that you should describe it as sessions. Like, you, you pay for, like, th- you can have three active sessions. So it was like, well, right. whatever those sessions are, that's fine, but you can only have up, up to three people watching. But now it's like, now you have a certain amount of devices, and all the devices have to be yours, I imagine, is what it says. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's ridiculous. But, you know, it was like, mate, I, I, I always thought, it was like with a TV license. I always thought they'll never enforce that. They're never sending people to jail over that. You know what I mean? But they fucking do. <laughs> it's, and that's a disgrace. What if I have a... You know, because remember as well, I'm paying the BBC because the government has said the BBC is so important to society. What an outdated concept in the modern media landscape. It's so important because, because they're truly independent. They're not. They're beholden to the government because of this arrangement. But basically, that there's the tax that you would pay the government for having any broadcasting or reception equipment in your house, you pay the BBC instead. They get to take it as like a lien um, so they can fund their programming. But over the years, it got to a point where that was just an agreement that we did and we just did it. And then it was now this legal enforcement, dickheads in vans, you know, like me, claiming they can fucking scan through your walls and see if you have a TV. When, if you've seen the troglodytes descend round, like, amazing they can drive a fucking car, let alone a fucking radar, you know? But anyway, you, you deal with all of that bullshit, and it's like, you know, you find people over it. It's an unpaid tax, you know? And, you, and by the way, you should be able to morally object. Especially in an age when I can just literally never have to watch BBC programming. I can, you know, don't have to have terrestrial TV, don't have to ever go on their website. You could literally just make it so I couldn't. But no, instead, they send little old ladies to fucking jail because they don't want to pay the license fee. Because, you know, the BBC is a fucking nonce factory. Why the fuck would it, why do I want to give them money? Like, you know, you still haven't atoned for that. You're still making a fucking Jimmy Savile dramatization with Alan Partridge, Steve Coogan playing Jimmy Savile. As if the BBC should be the people who tell the story about what really happened with Jimmy Savile when he operated with impunity under their nose for years. Yeah, maybe I don't want to give you any money after that. Is that all right? Can I not? No? I have to go to prison. So, fuck this. Fuck Netflix. <laughs> fuck. This is, this is ridiculous. But it will happen. Someone someone will get, like... It'll be a fine, probably, to test the waters, like... You know, so it's coming. I'll cheer you up a bit, Sam. I'll I'll move us out of the dystopia and read you a story about a a sad tale from the Leicester Mercury. Uh, This is a story about how a tattooed lady, a tattooed mother, was forced to watch the school nativity play through the window because they didn't like her tattoos. So, a mum who's addicted to tattoos claims she was forced to watch her child's nativity play from a window outside because of her ink. Mum of two, Melissa Sloan, says teachers refused to give her a seat inside 
and told her to go to the back garden. The 45-year-old says she often gets treated differently because of her unique appearance and said she's not wanted at the children's Christmas fair. Melissa, who lives in Wales... Of course she does. But she's got an English flag tattooed on her fucking cheek, but so... I know, like, what do you want, Welsh. then? Yeah, no. No chance. No chance. Unless, like... I know. No, just no chance. She's also got the Playboy bunny tattooed on her cheeks and i am just gonna say she looks (laughs) she she does look like her dad was saruman (laughs) that's all i'm saying it looks like someone did those play by buddies when it was lottery pens but no like the little mini ones (laughs) it's not ideal like she's been under not ideal like not ideal but um Anyway, Melissa, who lives in Wales, said she's often at the receiving end of cruel jibes from trolls, both offline and online, due to her appearance. Now, word of advice, if you do live in Wales, probably don't get an English flag tattooed on your face and not expect a bit of banter about that. Like, like I am just saying, like, that's just... It should be common sense in a way, you know? But anyway... She previously admitted to getting three new designs a week. Uh, d- designs, I don't, <laughs> don't know about if I'd use that. But, you know, I suppose, technically. But anyway, she gets three a week and has 800 all over her body. The festive season is hard for the parent because she doesn't feel wanted in her children's events. Describing how the school have allegedly banned her from certain events, Melissa said, no Christmas parties for me. And when I go to my child's school, I don't get invited. They said once for me to go to the back garden and look through the class window. The teachers told me to do that. That's why I don't go to school. Play. No, listen, you're probably thinking I'm going to be down on this lady because, you know, of all the things she's done to herself. But no, 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 far from. I like. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah, like, just because you grab it's a bit shitty yeah. drawn doesn't mean I'm going to treat you like a fucking rodent to force you outside the court. No, exactly. Like, yeah. It's absolutely outrageous. Like, Funny thing is, you know, uh, I, I, I've got an uncle who, well, he passed away recently, but I, I, I had an uncle past tense. He had tattoos on his face and he used to get treated very weird by people still. People haven't come round to the facial tattoo in Britain yet. I, I mean, think. it's a bit much. I feel like you should probably expect someone to mention it. Be like, fucking hell. You've got a fucking yeah. rabbit on your cheeks. Well, you, put it this way. If you if you essentially, you know, decorate yourself, people are going to yeah, like... you're going to mention it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you shouldn't be treated... Outside of commenting on it, you should be treated like fucking mud just because you decided to put... Oh, I know. That's out, that is outrageous. Like, you want to go watch a kid in the nativity yeah. play, right? You're watching through the window, like, <laughs> you fucking oh <ogre>. go. <laughs> you, you go, like, stay outside with the super mutants with air dryers. Fuck <laughs> off. You know what I mean? It's outrageous. Like, it is outrageous. Uh, she continues. Her son, Luke, she goes, he's going tonight to the kids' fair as I can't go there because I'm not wanted. I feel jealous because uh, I can't go to the Christmas fair as I know what the teachers and parents will be like towards me. Melissa previously said her inked appearance has stopped her from getting a job. I mean, I guess it does depend on the job. Like, It shouldn't, but it sort of does, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Anyway, she told the mirror, Surely, I still I, can't get a is, job. I'm sure even she'd admit, but it is a lot. Like, it's a lot happening, but. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. lot happening. Like, there is a lot happening. You're right. You got arts everywhere. There's roses. There's two uh, in non-symmetrical bunnies it's an england tattoo i actually get some more stick about the english flag as well living in wales but oh yeah totally that's, that's what stopped me getting a job yeah <laughs> it's nothing to do I'm with looking, tattoos i'm looking on the other cheek like so if she'd had a welsh flag on the other one you know it might be paying them half half oh, and yeah, half true. like but no she doesn't like i can't tell what she has on the other cheek on that picture like yeah i don't know it, is it a parrot is like, is it a parrot, is it a like, heart? pecking her on the nose? Like, ah! I have no like idea. Don't know, like... 
She got a cross on her chin. A rose. It likes roses, kisses and hearts, mind. I don't even know what happened on the forehead. Like, Can't tell if that's like scrofula or a tattoo. Like, uh, there's a little head. Can you see a little David Beckham? No. Inside the rose, top left. Kind of. I can see. Yeah, you like, see him. I can see Bex, Jesus, like. kind of like. No, it's not. It's Bex, like. I don't see Bex. Be that but... is Bex. I'm like, I, I this. The longer yeah, I look there, I see a melted Ronnie O'Sullivan, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Bex. I'm going with Bex. I'm like. I'm it doesn't say Ronnie like O'Sullivan. it's one of them mysteries. I'll just have to die, die Drew not knowing the answer to. for me. Yep, Drew O'Sullivan, as he's known. On the circuit. But anyway, she said she can't get a job and she's banned from pubs. Uh, I still can't get a job because of my tattoos. I can't even go into pubs and start fist fights there. <laughs> <laughs> can't even go into pubs around here because of it. They say it's offensive. They don't like it. It upsets them in the posh pubs. I take no notice. I don't, she said, I don't think I'll be having one tattoo around Christmas. I'll leave that as it's our time. It'll be selfish if I have one around Christmas. It's not about me. I'll go for the glory after that. Loads of glory being made to stood outside like a dickhead, like in the rain. I can't wait to get back to normal. Yeah, yeah. Normal's a concept, isn't it? Right then, I'll end with two stories in African news. And uh, there's, no, there's just nowhere else to fit them in. But obviously, we're a show that covers stuff from all across the globe. So here you go. This is something that was doing the rounds on social media. This is the president of South Sudan rising to the anthem and pissing himself. You know, I was so loud. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to love the trombone. Oh. You can see him pissing himself, bud? Right, there you go. But. Just fall leave. I like he's looking send. at the floor, looking as if someone else put it there, but. But yeah, he's just gone full send. He's just gone full send and fully pissed himself. And he said... When asked, why did you piss yourself? He said, just out of extreme patriotism for my country. <laughs> you know, you ever been there, land of my father's, just belting out, and you thought, you know what? Like, I know the perfect way to express the love for my country. I just fucking, just fully piss myself in front of everyone. Like, he's even looking down, if you watch while he's doing it, hand on art the entire time. He's even looking down to see if it's gonna, if it's so much, it's gonna dribble on somebody else. Like he's in full, he's, it's like he's in full control. He was looking down. I thought it was like he was confused why he was there, but mm. like he didn't realize. Like what's that? Oh yeah, piss myself. <laughs> mm. Well, he's so, about to go on the guy's boot behind him as well, but the camera moved last minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, because obviously that fella like thinking that you know, I don't want to be down the street. Close. Like. It's getting close. Mm. But fortunately, the piss does remain off people's shoes. Like, so. But, um, so that, that was that happened. President Sudan pissing himself due to extreme patriotism. And then, final story of the show like the cost of living crisis. It's hit everyone. Has it affected you, Sam? Because there you are in Costco spending nine hundred yeah, pounds on caramel. Like... Everything's fucking expensive. It is if you buy nine hundred pounds worth of caramel. Like oh, sure, everything, like... but everything. The shop's expensive. Bread's expensive. Mm. Eggs expensive. Milk expensive. Fucking a pint is like five quid, even where I live. But it used to be like mm. two pound forty a pint. It's like a five or a pint. It's unreal. Well, you know, spare a thought because obviously, you know. Uh, Big lover of Uganda news. Uganda always close to my heart and the special relationship Wales has with Uganda down the years. And uh, it's even, the cost of living crisis has even got to Uganda, Sam. You know, just shows like ripples on a pond. 
And this is the story about the Ugandan farmer who has 102 children. <laughs> how, was you, how have you got time? Yeah. Like, do you, is, he, is he ever not shagging someone? Like, how, like I'm trying oh, to add that. that 67. Even... Ooh, he is up there. Yeah. Mate. He's had... yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fair play. Like, fair play about sowing your oats. Like. Anyway, a Ugandan farmer who has 102 children and 568 grandchildren has said he can no longer keep growing his family due to the rising cost of the living. Muzza Hasaya from Lusaka has asked his 12 wives to start using contraception so the family can buy more food. Not him, like. Never me. <laughs> Never me. Never me. <laughs> I'm going to make you 12 do it instead of me do it. Uh, he signed up to Hustlers <laughs> University, this cunt, like, isn't he? Like, um, yeah, he's asked his wife to start using contraception so the family can buy more food to eat. Uh, he said, my income has become lower and lower over the years due to the rising cost of living, and my family has become bigger and bigger. I married one woman after another. How can a man be satisf satisfied with one woman, he said. Now, polygamy is legal in Uganda, uh, but all his wives are what they call monitored, which means they live together, and it's to stop them eloping with other guys. So he's got all of his wives under one roof, and it's, you know, increasingly large family he said adding to his financial wars musa can no longer work due to ill health and two of his wives have left him because of money problems so he said i've seen the bad financial situation and i am now he says i am now taking the birth control pill no go. no no not you is it oh yeah yeah, you say it is. You told them all to take it, not you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's saying, I'm now taking the birth control. He means they're taking the birth control pill, I'm pretty sure. Well, like, um, so he's got children ranging from six to 51 years old. You know. And a third of them live with him on his farm. So, unfortunately, Moose's bid for the world's largest family is going to be put on hold. Thanks, Joe Biden. That's what I have to say about it. <laughs> so there you go. That was it. That was an episode of I Hate It Here. I, 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 I do. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking really do. I really, really do. Anything you want to add to that, Sam, before we get off? No, nah, but... Me <laughs> <Sorry>. too. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, am I? All right. Well, there you go. That was the news. We wish it wasn't. Bye. Ta-da. <laughs>